hyperlapses add more depth to your videos and are also a great addition to your social media. I'm going to explain to you a few tips to help you get the best hyperlapses. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, my name is Farhan and welcome to yet another video. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Like its predecessor, the Air 2S also comes with automated hyperlapse features that include waypoints, circle, and course log. And also there's the option of free hyperlapses. You have the options of shooting the hyperlapses in JPEG or RAW or you can turn these off and the drone also automatically creates a hyperlapse for you no matter which of these options you choose. The results straight out of the drone are pretty impressive, but I prefer to edit these myself when I'm adding them to my videos. But if you wanna use them straight out of the drone, I think it's just best to use them for social media. The first tip is pretty obvious. Don't shoot on days that are windy, or try not to shoot on days that are windy, but if you do and it's a little bouncy or jumpy, you can still use the inbuilt stabilizers in your editing software but if you want to also take it a step further in stabilization you can always get adobe's after effects the next tip is to shoot in raw raw photos give you a lot of flexibility to edit your photos in editing software such as lightroom so shoot in raw when creating hyperlapses in the daytime i recommend using nd filters this is to get your shutter speed down so you can get that natural cinematic motion blur in your hyperlapses i edit my hyperlapse photos in lightroom but i don't indulge in much heavy editing as i do color grading in my video editing software final cut pro the dji air 2s comes with a one inch camera which means more flexibility when shooting in low light scenarios you have more light entering your camera this means you don't need to increase your iso all the way up to 1600 or 3200 but you can still take pretty good hyperlapses using just iso 400 and even iso 800 increasing your iso too much is not recommended because it tends to add more noise to your video footage or even your photos taking advantage of that one inch sensor can give you the option of choosing iso 400 or 800 i recommend shooting in the lowest iso you can can and if your hyperlapse is underexposed by even 0.7 or even 1 it's still good you can always increase the brightness and highlights in post the recommended shutter speeds are 1 over 4 or 1 over 5th of a second i also prefer shooting in intervals of 2 or 3 seconds and i choose a minimum duration of about 7 or 5 seconds sometimes to get a good looking hyperlapse. Waypoint hyperlapses are probably my favorite to use because it gives you control on the camera pitch angle, rotation, and height. Once you save the waypoint's hyperlapse, you can always visit the same spot and take off from there. And this comes in real handy when you're shooting or creating day and night hyperlapses. Let's say you went to a particular spot and took off for a daytime hyperlapse, a daytime waypoint hyperlapse, and then once you land or before you take off, you save your waypoint hyperlapse. You can visit the same spot in the evening when there isn't much sun and you can take another hyperlapse there and you can mix them up. And here's an example of what it can look like. <laughs> Circle is my next favorite hyperlapse. You just tap on a subject and the drone itself will take a hyperlapse rotating around your subject. And you can set the duration and speed as well as the ISO and shutter speed too. I prefer 4K because sometimes when I export them to 1080p, it looks more crispier. That's it for this video guys. I hope it was useful and if it was, do hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, take care and stay safe.